Rand Paul demands Ukraine funding be eliminated if you want to avoid a government um, shutdown. And here's Rand Paul say, to avoid a government shutdown, I will consent to an expedited vote on a clean CR, continuing resolution, without Ukraine aid in it. If leadership insists on funding another country's government at the expense of our own government, all blame rests with their intransience. And this is from The Hill, and the headline reads, Ron Paul, withdraw Ukraine money if you want to avoid a shutdown. That's what he says. If you want to avoid a shutdown, you need to withdraw Ukraine money. I'm going to get to a clip where Kevin... McCarthy says something very similar uh, to that, but let's now read the article. What? Senator Rand Paul reiterated his threat Thursday to uphold a Senate government funding bill because it includes more than $6 billion in Ukraine funding. Now, that's the Senate bill. The House bill that they, I don't know if they tried to pass it. Right before I went on, what was going on with the shutdown is that they he had a clean CR with nothing was in it but aviation funding that the White House requested and something else that the White House requested. Everything else was out. The Ukraine funding in the House is out. Paul wrote on Twitter. I'm not even going to say X. I'm calling it Twitter. Paul wrote on Twitter, the social media uh, platform formerly known as Twitter, that he would only allow a vote on the spending stopgap before the September 30th deadline for funding government if Senate leaders pulled out the money for Ukraine. That's Senate. So far, neither Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer nor Senator Republican Leader Mitch McConnell has signaled any willingness to pull the Ukraine money out of the bill. Quote, I'm comfortable with the way we put together the Senate bill, end quote, McConnell told reporters. Anticipating uh, Paul's objection to speeding up the floor debate, leaders have told rank and file senators to suspect to vote through Sunday to get the temporary funding measure through the Senate. It must fund the government until November 17th. Now, there is a couple of other things I want to show you on here. So let's play this one. This is him making the announcement on the floor of the Senate about his decision, I, I did want to play that, so let's listen. Some say the war in Ukraine is a fight to save democracy. But those who say that need to be honest with themselves. Ukraine is far from a shining example of democracy. And while the strain of war can make for questionable government actions, we have to live with them when the war is over. For all the platitudes about America supporting democracy and making the world safe for democracy, the Woodrow Wilson advocates among us, the biggest recipient of American welfare, Ukraine, canceled its next presidential election. You're telling me we're sending $100 billion to a country that's not going to have elections? We're going to send $100 billion to a country that now has, what, a president for life? I say, oh, well, we could, but it's difficult. Does anybody remember the American Civil War where 600,000 people died and yet we didn't miss an election? They've canceled the presidential election. We should cancel our aid as a response. Now, to the point that he's saying they cancel their election, I actually, and I haven't said this on camera yet, I actually think the United States made that request to them. Because you have to think, if they want to continue this war, they can't, they, they don't have time to possibly have an election that's going to put in a different president that doesn't want to go along with this plan that the United States and NATO wants to do. So I think that it's the United States that got him to do that because why, because from the standpoint of Zelensky, why wouldn't he want to get out of this shit? Let somebody else take this shit over. Let's have election. Let somebody else take this over so I can get the fuck out of here away from these Nazis who are threatening my life. If I want to uh, do a peace deal. There's, there's also this incredible story about an American journalist, Gonzalo Lira. He's reportedly right now in prison in Ukraine on allegations of, of spreading Russian propaganda 
I, I, I don't understand this, that Joe Biden could approve $113 billion of money to Ukraine, and yet he has not tried to get this American journalist out of prison there? How is that possible? It's even worse than that, Maria. They've canceled the elections. What kind of democracy has no election? So next year, Zelensky said he's not going to have an election because it would be inconvenient during the war and would be expensive. Well, the thing is, if you don't have elections, why in the world would we be supporting a country that's not a democracy? They've banned the political parties. They've invaded churches. They've arrested priests. So, no, it isn't a democracy. It's a corrupt regime. And are the Russians any better? No, the Russians are worse. But at the same time, we don't always have to pick some side to be on. But the ultimate reason I'm against this is we don't have the money. And when we borrow more money, it leads to more inflation, leads to more likelihood of recession in our country. And so we just can't keep doing it. Yeah, so that's Ron Paul on it. And, there's, there's also um, so we're continuing the segment, but I'm just moving now to a different part of the segment because we're we're staying on Ukraine and the fight over the U- over Ukraine uh funding, but now let's e- let's examine it in the context of what's happening uh with the shutdown because the shutdown, like if you watch mainstream media, you may not know. That the shutdowns, num- one of the, I would say the top issue of the shutdown is Ukraine funding. I would say that. Here's a Fox News headline Ukraine funding raises a major political lightning rod in the government shutdown fight. I'll read that in a second. And this is a rep, uh, Rep Melanie uh, Stansberry. And let's listen to what she says about the shutdown. Hey everyone, happy Friday. I'm here, I just arrived at the Capitol for the last day of noticed votes. Um, We don't know what's gonna happen in the next 48 hours. Of course, tomorrow is the end of the fiscal year. And as far as we can tell, the majority which controls the floor still doesn't have a plan to pass a real and meaningful budget or a CR to avert a shutdown. In fact, we were told that they don't even have the votes to pass their own CR. So here we are and uh, you know, we're angry. It's the American people's lives are on the line here. And we know that thousands, tens of thousands of New Mexicans will be impacted by this. But we're here, we're going to fight it out to the very end. And uh, I just want you all to know that I'm thinking of you and sending my love. And I'm about to go do an interview for Good Morning America. So I'm excited about that. But you know, really unfortunate circumstances. But we'll see you later, everyone. Happy Friday. So let's listen to this. Intervene to avoid a shutdown. So I understand your question as well. So what's happening with the shutdown is that if you're watching mainstream media, you notice they're more concerned about who to blame for the shutdown than actual the shutdown. And that's the whole framing is that it's the dimmer, it's the Republicans fault, it's the Republicans fault. But I'm going to show you a poll that actually says the opposite. But let's listen to White House press secretary answer a question is, if you're so concerned about the shutdown, when is the president gonna get involved? Let's listen. At what point would the president intervene to avoid a shutdown? So I understand your question as well. I don't have any meetings or uh, to, to read out as it relates to uh, to Congress. Can you confirm when the two men last spoke? Uh, I don't have a date or time, uh, a timeline of when they last spoke. Does the president plan to take up McCarthy's offer to me and does the White House see any value in that? Look, I'm going to be very clear. The the person that McCarthy or the people that McCarthy needs to talk to is his own caucus. That's who he needs to have a conversation with, not the president. It's not on us to fix. It's not on this president to fix. The government shutdown is not for the top leader of the governments to be concerned with. That's what the press secretary, you know what this is saying? They also don't care about what the effects of the shutdown, they care about getting their poll numbers up. If he goes and negotiates with Kevin McCarthy, how is that gonna bring the Jim, the how is that gonna bring the GOP down so that he rises? So of course not. It's irregardless of what happens to the American people and soldiers like they always trying to say, they're not going to get paid. They're going to get paid. Pierre, uh, uh, Karen, uh, uh, the press secretary obviously is showing that the, uh, the, uh, the president doesn't care and wants to use this as a way to prop his own candidacy up. 
But let's listen to this. And who is to blame? This is from CNN. I think this one was a bit of a surprise to me, given, I think, what the conventional wisdom is. So there have been a number of polls on this. So who would you mainly blame for a government shutdown? Actually, the plurality blamed Joe Biden of the Democrats in Congress at 39 percent, the GOP in Congress at 33 percent, both equally at 22. But in the two polls that I have seen, when you combine Biden and the congressional Democrats, more voters blame them than blame Republicans in Congress. And that is very different than what we've seen in prior shutdowns. So who is the public blame for blame for prior shutdowns? Republicans in 95, 96, Republicans in 2013 and Republicans in 2018, 19. So this may be a shutdown that is quite different than that in terms of the public blame, because at least at this point, more Americans say they'll blame Biden and or the Democrats in Congress. Not looking good, Jean-Pierre, press secretary. Your attempts to make this, with along with cable news, to make this the GOP's fault is simply not working in your own poll. In your own poll. That That is a damn shame. Let's see what AOC says. Here's what went down. We just won a clean 45-day government extinction. So obviously the Democrats voted for it. That means nothing. This doesn't mean it's here. The Senate still has to do it, and they want six million, six billion in the bill for Ukraine. The Senate does. So here, here's what went down. We just won a clean 45-day government extension, stripped. GOP's earlier 30% cuts to Social Security Administrator stave off last minute. AOC is trying to take credit for this, man. Do you understand all those things that the GOP wanted was in the bill that was voted down by Republicans? Then he came and said, I'm going to do a clean CR. She's trying to make it seem like they negotiated this shit out of the bill. Just despicable, just despicable. Let me read it again. Unless I'm wrong, am am, am I reading this wrong? Here's what went down. We, she's saying we just won a clean 45-day government extension, stripped them. We stripped GOP's earlier 30% cuts to Social Security Administration, staved off last-minute anti-immigration hijinks. This is a hijink. This tweet is a hijink. And averted shutdown for now, people will get checks and empty and Marjorie Taylor Greene threw a tantrum on the way out. That's a win-win because Marjorie Taylor Greene, this is not, AOC is not even a serious person, man. AOC is not serious at all. You see how she throws in, y'all can keep, y'all, y'all professional managerial class types, y'all can keep, y'all can keep yourselves on this, this mother. Oh, this is what I okay. This is one of the things I was looking for. Let's listen to and and, and Charles Booker is the one who posted this. Charles Booker, a supposed progressive, is posting the progressive haters video here. Let's listen to Hakeem Jeffries. Like this guy is so bad. He is so unappealing. He is so uninspiring. He he is so he he, he sounds like an introvert that's being forced. To talk in front of a uh, talk in front of people. Let's listen to Hakeem. We will oppose any efforts to cut Social Security and Medicare. We will oppose any efforts to slash public school funding. We'll oppose any efforts to undermine American democracy. You see what I mean? Like his tone and his demeanor doesn't even match the clapping. It seems like the clapping is more excited than him. Like, he, he's just so bland and terrible. But all he's doing here, I don't need to hear anymore. Now I remember this video. That's not the one I was looking for. All he's doing near is just saying, you know, virtue signaling. That's what they're doing. Now, let's read this. This is recount. Shutdown averted. Really? 335 to 91. House just passed a 45-day stopgap resolution that does not include border security funding or Ukraine aid. 90 GOP knows, one dim no. This video is just showing uh, the passage On this of vote, it. The yeas are 335. The nays are 91. Two-thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. It's just for 45. They're clapping for 45 days, bro. 
in 45 days, this is going to, we're going to have the same conversations we're having now. Do you think they got 45 days? Do you think on day two, they're going to start working on day 44? Which one, when do you think they're going to seriously start talking about serious shit? Do you think it's going to be day two of this 45 day extension? Or do you think it's going to be day 43? My bet is day 43. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene. Democrats are clearly fine with shutdowns. They shut down the whole country over COVID for far too long. People here in Washington need to understand how it feels to be shut down. So that's her, I guess, advocating for a shutdown. Let's listen. Let's talk about the White House and the Senate. I mean, Democrats are clearly, they're fine with shutdowns. They shut down the whole country over COVID for far too long, and the American people suffered. I promise you, most Americans aren't too worried about the government shutting down, which is, which is a serious problem. But I'm not. this is because Democrats shut down the country. So there needs to be, people here in Washington need to understand how it feels to be shut down, because the American people know exactly how that feels. They lost their businesses they lost jobs kids lost almost two years of school so i mean this it's not like the american people don't understand shutdowns the white house and the senate which is democrat controlled said that this this cr was dead on arrival they don't they don't want to secure the border so i'm i've got to go in here because i want to find a path that's going to work what is the need to be, i don't know i gotta go <laughs> So they, she's talking about how they stripped the funding. It was in there before, the funding for the border, and then they stripped uh, stripped it out. This is Michael Steele. Is this the black Michael Steele? Just take it from Republicans. Uh, just take it from Republicans on who's to blame for the shutdown. This is COPE. I already showed you the, the poll where every the um, shutdown is uh, being blamed. The plurality is on Democrats. 